Hi everyone, welcome to On the Other Hand. I'm Ariane Zerscher, and today I'm going to be demonstrating turkey work. Turkey work is a lot of fun, and I think it's a little daunting for some people in the beginning, but once you get the hang of it, you'll see it's really great. I'm going to show you how you can brush the turkey work to make it look fuzzy. Depending on the thread you use, you can create a very, very different look. I'm going to show you a couple of different threads so you can see the possibilities. So go ahead and grab something to stitch with. Grab a needle and whatever thread you feel like using for turkey work and come along with me. Let's stitch together. Don't forget to hit the like button and please subscribe. I love hearing from you, so please leave any comments you might have or questions in the comment section below. Let's get started. This is their little block that I made when I first found Sue of Spargo, and I was experimenting with her techniques of layering. My husband loves these dogs. I can't remember what they're called. He calls them sharkies because they have a head like a shark. So I made this, but I wanted to make a little porcupine. So I just added him in velvet, and I'm now going to use Petite Berry Velvet. And I thought I would use maybe a little strands of gray in there, the brown, mostly the brown, and a couple strands of black and see how that looks. Someone on Instagram posted and tagged Sue Spargo and had done, it looked like a hedgehog. Whoever it was had done this little beast and he was so cute using petite berry velvet and I thought that is so clever. I want to try that, hence my little porcupine. So the first thing I want to do when I'm thinking about my turkey work is where do I want the turkey work to go? Obviously, I don't want to cover his whole face, so I want to keep a little bit of his face free. So I'm probably going to go from here and go around and maybe stop so his little feet show but pretty much this whole bit, which is quite ambitious, even for me. Let's see how it works. Sue's creative stitching book where she has turkey work and it's on page 144. She shows you going back, working back and forth and she starts on the left-hand side because she's left right-handed and most people would. I'm left, so I'm gonna start on the left, but it really doesn't matter because if you're right-handed, you're gonna end up here and you're gonna have to come back. So I thread my Petite Berry Velvet onto my chenille number 24 needle. My first stitch here is gonna be my anchor stitch. My anchor stitch is always going to go in front. So I'm gonna take my stitch, I'm gonna go in between where this point A began and where I went down with my needle, point B, point C is gonna be kind of in the middle of A and B with my thread in front because this is my anchor. I didn't make life easy for myself. This is a batik and batik is one of the worst things to be trying to stitch through. Didn't learn that until later. This is a loop. So my loop stitch is going to be going in the back of my anchor. So I'm going to go down with my loop. I'm going to come back up. This is going to be my loop. I'm going to go ahead and anchor my loop. Right. So my loop stitch is always in the back. This is my anchor stitch in the front. My loop my anchor. So when I'm doing this, it doesn't really matter if it's perfectly abutting. The anchor is abutting each next anchor. It can be a little off. It doesn't, it, it's not going to show. You're never going to see it, but that's what you're going for. But if they overlap a little, you know, say I, I'm not paying attention, I'm not thinking, and I come up here, it's not going to matter. As long as you have an anchor and a loop, you're going to be fine. Don't get caught up in, oh my gosh, I didn't, you know, my anchor stitch isn't touching the next anchor. Don't worry about any of that. It's going to be fine. It's never going to show. As long as the loop is secured with an anchor, you'll be fine.
All right, so I've finished doing this, so now I'm going to do the clipping. I want to be sure that I get all of my little loops. I'm going to trim him. I thought it would be fun to show how to do turkey work. This was something I designed a couple years ago when I first found Sue Spargo, and I was playing with all of her different techniques. For the turkey work, I thought that it would be fun to just do the tip of the cat's tail here. I'm, I've am i threaded up, this is Sue Spargo's Eleganza variegated thread in a number eight weight, it's easy M01, onto a number 24 chenille needle. Here's where I want my turkey work to start. I'm gonna start over on this right corner at the very edge, pull my thread through. I'm going to go to the left and I'm going to come up, so if this is point A, this is point B, I'm going to come up in the middle of A and B, and I want to have this thread in front. So there's my anchor right there. This is now going to be my first loop. So now I'm going to go a little far ways away. I want to put my needle in a little to the left of that first anchored stitch, and I want to come out right where that first anchored stitch ends. So it's going to butt up right up against it. This is going to be my first loop. Depending on how high you want this work to go from from your from your base, that's how big of a loop you're going to make. If you're not sure, leave it a little higher than you think you could possibly need. You can always trim it down. So this loop is right in back of these anchored stitches. So now I'm going to go with my thread just again to the left of that of this leg right here, and I'm gonna come up right next to where this leg is going up. That's gonna be my anchor. Now I'm gonna go down a little ways away. This is my loop. Go down my anchor. I'm going to do another loop. I'm going to keep these as close together as I can because I want them pretty dense. It's a thin thread that I'm using. If I was using a thicker thread, I wouldn't have to perhaps do it quite so dense. But I don't want the turkey work to be sparse. I'm going to clip all these little loops. Now I'm going to take my bunker brush, which is this. It kind of looks like a cat, cat brush, right? And I am going to do this. I have my poof, but he's pretty raggedy, so I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to give him a little trim. Whenever it seems a little straggly, I just give him a little clip. And there he is. I think it's so funny, it always makes me laugh. I hope you found this helpful. Please don't forget to hit the like button and subscribe. 
I love hearing from you, so please leave any comments or questions you might have in the comment section below. And here's to stitching together. <laughs>